Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Steel Here podcast, where I'm your host, Kevin Adams, alongside my partner in crime, Jersey Jerry. It's been a while since Jerry and I have been on the mic. We took uh, about five weeks off here, just reloading, figuring out what we're going to do with the content this year. And so we finally have uh, a plan in place for you guys. Uh, this episode, we're going to record with uh, Braden Fajoko, newly signed nose tackle for uh, for the Steelers here. It's a hell of an interview. This guy is is really good. You guys are going to love what, what he says about playing for the Steelers. And uh, from there, then the draft is here upon us about three weeks out. So Jerry and I are either going to give you another episode next week or the following week, and we're going to give you some draft content. Something that we're considering giving you guys here is Jerry and I had talked about streaming, like a live stream, maybe uh, YouTube or something like that for the draft. So you guys could engage with us there, ask us questions, basically like we're all watching the draft together. Uh, if that's something you guys are interested in, let us know in the comments. Like, comment, subscribe. We're going to be back now giving you guys a, a pretty good amount of content here the rest of the year into football season. So hang with us. It, it's starting to be a blast here. We hope you guys enjoy the interview, and we'll see you again here either next week or the following week from there. And we got um, – what was I going to say? We got some stuff planned for the off season at camp. We'll yep. get some videos out to you guys for camp. Um, like Kev said, draft night will be really cool. We'll do probably like a YouTube live stream so, you know, they can comment and stuff like that in the chat, whatever. Um, and, yeah, no, looking forward to the off season, man. We've got some stuff planned. Uh, can't wait to get out to Latrobe. That'll be really cool. Hopefully we get back for Friday Night Lights again. That was really cool. You know, I mean, last year was kind of screwed up because of the rain, but I'll get to kind of experience it for the first time. So hope to see you guys there. And, yeah, uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the episode with Braden. He's a great dude. Absolutely. Just to hit on what Jerry's saying about some of the content leading up. So we'll give you a, a small tease. So we're finally uh, putting some dates together for we're going to play golf with Kenny and, and some of his buddies. And then when we were talking to Braden, he's interested in playing with us, and possibly some of the other guys. So we're going to get you guys some vlogs, some some cut ups, you know, of us playing golf, get that stuff out to you. Uh, we think you guys might enjoy seeing seeing these competitive uh, athletes that we that we love watching play football look not very good on a golf course so it's it's gonna be a lot of fun to be able to get out and do that stuff so yeah hang with us here hope you enjoy the episode let us know like i said in the comments if you're interested in the youtube stuff streaming it with jerry and i and uh, we'll see you here next week it's time to welcome to the show a six foot three 300 pound bulldozer a former lsu tiger national champion and the newest member of the pittsburgh steelers defensive line number 96 brayden fajoko what's up brayden welcome to the show kev appreciate you man jerry appreciate you I, I felt a little compliment there when you said 300 pounds so i was like oh okay you know i look i look a little slim today <laughs> that's a good thing you know when you read the stats online it said three bills i'm like i'm gonna leave it at the three bills knowing full well he's probably a little bit bigger than the three but we'll leave it at the three that it has listed for him bro my, i felt bad the other day i was like you know my fiance she was reading you know my physicals and, and she was reading you know all the kind of measurable she's like you haven't been 300 pounds since your freshman year in college i said all right way to make me feel <laughs> way to make me feel good you know <laughs> Do you, in the off season, are you are you typically a little lighter, and then you bulk up closer to the season? Bro, I'm Polynesian, so like weight with us is like it could be here, it could be here, and at the end of the day, like when it's time to play football, we'll be right here, ready to go. <laughs> I don't know, like Polynesians' digestion systems, bro, it, it's so weird. Like, I mean, I'll, I'll eat a salad, gain five pounds, you know, I'll <laughs> eat ramen noodles and lose ten pounds, you know, it's weird. <laughs> so what's your standard wake up in the off season? Like what's right now leading up to, to mini camp and OTAs and shit like that? Like, what are you getting into on the average day? Uh, so, I mean, my day usually starts pretty early. Um, I wake up around seven, 7 a.m. Central time. Um, and then, you know, I like to get up, make me some food. Um, sometimes I'm not a big eater in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll just drink some chocolate milk and then take my vitamins, whatever. Um, I'll head up to the facility I work out at. Uh, takes about 20, 20, 25 minute drive, get up there, workouts starts around eight, eight 30. That'll go for about two hours. Uh, come home, 
uh, take a shower, usually get an Epsom salt bath. Um, and then in the afternoon is kind of like my second workout ish. I like to do is whether it's like football related stuff or, you know, I like to box. I've been getting into boxing, you know, I used to box a lot when I was a kid. So, you know, I've been getting back into that, um, Peloton, you know, all kinds of stuff that, you know, just kind of keep me active. And then, you know, after that second workout, when it dies down a little bit, make some lunch and then, you know, I'm gaming for the rest of the day, bro. Hell yeah. Game. What's the game? So, I mean, I recently got banned on Call of Duty for hacking. Um, I, I, <laughs> I don't know how that happened. You know, you get one 19 kill game and then all of a sudden they, these, these rats on Call they of Duty start, just start think they're a hacker. You. you know, they start getting shadow banned and stuff. So I've been playing Apex lately. Um, it's worse. There's more hackers on there. So, you know, I might just get back to playing GTA roleplay or, you know, Hogwarts Legacy. Just start streaming something because I've been trying to stream more this offseason build content but yeah bro i got banned on call of duty that kind of pissed off my whole off season because i was just grinding <laughs> every day speaking, speaking of boxing actually you know brendan if you didn't know this i'm uh i'm undefeated i'm one and oh rough and rowdy champion never <laughs> lost i still got the belt Congrats, uh, I, don't know, I don't know if you know much about barstool barstool puts on and you know you're friends with ken jack uh who asked who happened to be a chargers fan so this is how this connection kind of came about but Barstool holds this like rough and rowdy thing, which is pretty funny. I don't know if you ever watched anything. So, so cool story, right? So Ken Jack, um, we were messaging back in the day and, uh, I'm currently hacked on my Twitter right now. So if you guys see someone tweeting German stuff, it's not me. Um, I got <laughs> hacked from Germany. Uh, but so long story short, right? Um, my old Twitter, um, I'm trying to get it back. I mean, that's like a staple. You know, I've, I've interacted with fans. It's kind of where my most of my content gets built. But I tweeted like two years ago. I said they should create a show where you take internet trolls and athletes and you sign a waiver and you let them just duke it out in the ring. Mm -hmm. Wow. God. Ken Jack reached out to me. He said, you got to hit up my guys at Rough and Rowdy and we got to make this thing happen. So... It's crazy, Jerry, that I was actually in the process of, of talking with Rough and Rowdy, and I got so busy during the season, I didn't really get to finish it, but it was something we were talking about. No that's BS. So, that's so crazy. What do you... No BS. So as an athlete, right, and, and you know, I kind of get it too because I'm, you know, I'm not an athlete, but I work at a big company, so there's always mm -hmm. trolls out there. How do you deal with, like, if you have a down game or missed a couple tackles or mm. missed a sack? How do you deal with the guys on the internet now? You're coming to Pittsburgh. It's a really, really diehard fan base who mm -hmm. they don't hold back usually. And how do you deal? How do you deal with that? The trolls after the games and stuff like that. Is it kind of like mute and keep going, or you'll get smart with them, or what? So here, here's my my whole take on trolls. Right, um, if you're the athlete, you know, and and you're going to be the guy that you want to boast about yourself, then you better be able to take a dose of your own medicine, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, if you're an athlete that's quiet and, um, you know, you're not the social media type and you're kind of reserved, then by all means, I don't feel like internet trolls need to be messing with those type of athletes because they're never on the internet. Right. Yeah. Um, for me, myself, I love it. You know, I love when fans tell me, hey, you fat slob, like you, you're not getting the job done. <laughs> or, you know, like after the game with fans, like, man, you know, good game. Because I'm always the type that, like I said, you know, Jerry, I, I, I never want people to recognize me for what I do on the football field. You know, I want people to know me as a person. Right. And um, I feel like football is such a small thing we do. Um, and like with trolls, I mean, it's a free game. You know, I have a burner account, too. You know, I'm trolling half the time on Twitter. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I keep that reserved to myself. Um, but it's all it's all fun and games, man. You know, the fans, there's a there's a special place for them, you know, in sports because, it's a it's a relationship between, you know, the players that play the game, the coach that coach, the referees that officiate and the fans that cheer yep. um, without it. It's a revolving circle. Everything works in unison. Right. You know, we build the energy off of them. We play. You know, we feed off of that. You know, if we're not playing good, they don't fill the seats. You know, at the end of the day, it's a relationship that needs to be unified and it goes hand in hand. So, you know, I'm excited to be in pit. I know there's a a lot of big shoes to fill. Um, you know, all I've been hearing is the hunt for seven mm -hmm. growing up. All I heard was six bird, six bird growing up. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, that's the kind of stuff that, you know, when I signed with Pitt, I said, <clears throat> you know what, excuse my language, but I got to pick my shit up. You know, there's a, there's a real focal point in football here. And I love it because that's going to bring out the best in players. 
For what sure. was you, you ever... did you have any other offers? Were you interested in going anywhere else, or was like Steelers the first team that reached out and boom, you're done, you went there? Yeah, so there was there was two or three other teams, um, you know that that kind of reached out. Um, it was it was all the same thing. It was all minimums, um, mm-hmm. but for me, I think the biggest thing was fit, and I felt like Pittsburgh um, fit my style of play. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a three four guy, you know. I'm not saying I don't want to play in a four three. I can do it. Um, I'm a football guy. I play defensive line. Um, but what I take pride in is just playing inside in between the tackles, um, playing physical, playing rugged. You know, I'm not really a flashy guy where, you know, I'm not going to go and swim a guy or I'm not going to, you know, be Aaron Donald. But I think what I do fits what Pitt wants out of me as a player. And that's just, just play rugged every play. And I think, you know, that's what I grew up doing. That's what I grew up loving. Um, and I kind of tapped into that when I got to LSU. You know, being with Coach O, one of the most rugged coaches out there. You know, yeah. he demanded that every day that you be a hard nosed mother f when that whistle blows, and you know that's how you're gonna play. So, you know, I'm excited. You know, in free agency it was it was a little nervous because you're like, oh, you know, the last three years you were like, oh, I can't. I knew I was gonna be in LA. I knew I was gonna be a Charger. Mm-hmm. And then one team calls, and then another team called, and it's like, oh, it's kind of not the offer you want, or you know, you're expecting something high, but you got to settle here, or you know, it's 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 all kind of stuff that works out. But man, I'm happy to be a Pittsburgh Steeler now. I think one of the my favorite things about signing you was went to your profile on Twitter there and saw uh, Brian Baldinger, which is your pin tweet where you're just dominating mm. in, in the one game. And the Steelers, especially you say the fit, I think that's the biggest thing for us right now is that we haven't had a legitimate nose tackle per se yeah. that, that can eat up space, that, that's going to take on a blocker. And, and mm-hmm. they're normally they're sliding Cam over the center uh, as of late. And it's just not, that's not really where Cam is going to thrive at. Mm-hmm. You know, so to have a guy who's a little bit more comfortable right over center to dominate, to hold that guy in, in space is is going to be huge for the Steelers. And that's why, you know, it's massive to get you in there even before the draft, knowing, look, we're good at that position now. We have a mm-hmm. guy who can fill that role, and, and it's going to be pretty pretty beneficial for the Steelers. So, yeah, I, I think the fit is perfect in Pittsburgh for you. Well, that's what I think. I think the Steelers are starting to commit to stopping the run. You know, you've seen the linebackers they got. Even the safety they got, uh, Neil. I mean, those are run stoppers. These guys are run stoppers. So I think the Steelers are pretty committed to stopping the run. Um, So I think it it is a really, really good fit. I wanted to ask you, um, what's the transition like from, you know, a whole different state, cross country? You know, how quick are you going to end up in Pittsburgh? Are you buying? Are you renting? It's got to be such a hectic process for you. And, you know, you have a family. So getting you guys out of uh, L.A. and coming – all the way to Pittsburgh. Yeah. So, you know, with, with me, my, you know, my fiance right now, we, it's, so the process we we're buying in Dallas, that's where we want to live. Okay. Um, that's kind of like our home base in the season, just cause it's so affordable for us. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I get to pit in two weeks uh, for OTAs, you know, we're going to do some hunting. Uh, I've been working with, you know, the player development guy, uh, DY and, he's been able to be a big help in as far as looking at prospective spots to stay during the year. Mm-hmm. You know, I was getting to talk with Kevin before you came on and we we're talking about places that some of the players have stayed before. And, and I'm a huge guy in, in being cheap and I want to stay somewhere close. And, you know, I, was, I told Kev, I was like, man, you know, if I can get a bird scooter and just ride to the facility in the morning, you know, that's like <laughs> the ideal thing for me, bro, is just like charge it up, you know, lock myself in there, be there 20, 30 minutes before meeting starts. Um, but yeah, the process is, it's kind of challenging because I've never been through this before. Um, mm. you know, being the last three years in LA, you know, I had my house here in Dallas, but I also rented in LA. So I knew where I was, you know, it was kind of like, okay, there was a stable, you know, system where I, okay, I go here for half the year. I'm back here for half the year. Um, but I'm excited, you know, every, and I'll say this. And when I went and I, and I visited Pitt on Sunday, signed my contract, every person I talked to in that facility, um, didn't talk to me about football. They talked to me about how they could help me off the field. And that really struck to me because the first thing coach Tomlin said to me was, I don't want you to, this is the first words he said to me. He said, big dog, I don't want you to come in here and feel like you got to be Superman to do everything yourself. You need a place to stay. You need to know where to find food. You need a car. You need something. Call me, call my phone, you know, call, you know, Mr. Khan's phone. You can call anybody's phone in this building. We will help you. Don't feel like you got to do your own. And to me, that was just like, I love this. 
You know what I mean? I never had this, you know, not trying to talk down, but I never had where I could just go in and, you know, my head coach is like, big dog, call me. And his name don't even got to be about football. You need something yeah. help. You need some help. You don't got to be Superman. I'll get it done for you. And to me, that that kind of just hit home and it makes me want to play for this man. I told this man, I was like, give me some shoes. I'm ready to go work out right now. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. You know, yeah, man. I, I mean, Tomlin so. is just world class, man. Mm-hmm. You know, you hear it from all the players and then, you know, me and Kevin are uh, we're friendly with Kenny Pickett and stuff like that. Okay. We've, had, we've had some dinners with him. We just uh, we just had dinner with him Saturday. And then um, the other day, I think it was Tuesday, I went to the Devils game with Kenny. He was in town. So I was hanging out with him and his dad and a couple of his boys who happen to be my friends now as well. Um, I'll tell you what, man, that guy speaks so highly on Mike Tomlin. It's like crazy because me and Kevin, we're fans, man. We, you know, we're diehard Steelers fans. So we'll say some things online like, hey, I think Tomlin should have done this. I think he should have done that. And it always reverts back to like Kenny and other players giving us the perspective like, man, if you only knew half of this guy, man, you'd be blown away. So now me and Kevin are like all in, all in on Mike T, man. Yeah, I'm He's all trust legend. me. I'm all in. It didn't. It didn't. It didn't take long for me to to feel how genuine he was, and I think that's a that's a gift that I've been blessed with is is being able to see people and and you know see the genuity they bring to the table. Um, and I mean, I, that front office there, from you know Coach T to Mr. Khan to you know the yep. Weedle brothers and everybody there has just been you know I could feel you know the just the true genuine you know they really care for the players they really care about football and that's all i ever wanted yeah being a a a man of polynesian background that's big like the what i was researching a little bit about you is a lot of of what you do family is really important to you so that has Mm -hmm. to be also beneficial that the steelers you know the Rooney's, you know ownership of of one family throughout like the last coming up on 100 years here so that's a big thing but speaking to your family um the dance you have to give us a little bit of uh give us a little bit of because and i i watched a video yeah. of you and i remember seeing it on hard knocks a few years ago whenever mm-hmm. your dad was on the the jumbo and you're like that's my dad that's my dad so so tell us a little bit about that bro so you know the mm-hmm. haka man it, it's something that man it's always been a part of our culture the polynesian culture mm-hmm. it's a war cry um you know people say a war chant uh, but it's really a war cry. It's a cry to your ancestors. In the Polynesian language, we call it mana. Mana is energy. It's the energy from within. You can't see it. You feel it. Um, you know, and before the ancient Polynesian warriors, whether it was the Fijian, the Tongans, or the Maori, or the Samoans, they go to war. Everybody had their war cry. Whether it was the Hakka or the Hawaiians, they call it the Ha'a, or, you know, the um, whether the Tongans or, or the Samoans, whatever they did. It was always a war cry. It all symbolized the same thing. We're asking our ancestors to bless us when we go to war, to give us strength, to fight for our people, to fight for our family, the ones we love. If we die, please take our spirit into the afterlife. Give it to the next generation. Up. Fill them with our life. Fill them with our mana, our energy. And every time I did the haka, every time we did it as a kid, you learn it as a young man, you grow up, you understand the meaning of it. That's why it becomes so emotional. Not just when you watch my videos, but if you watch Other cultural haka videos, whether it's for a funeral, whether it's for a wedding, whether it's before a game in the Olympics when, you know, the the, the Maori team was doing it against Mm -hmm. the U.S. Yeah, it's emotional because it's not just a dance. It's a war cry. And they want the, 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 the men doing it. They want you to feel it. They want you to feel that mana, that energy of wow, like this really means something, you know, you tap into a different thing. And, and everybody asked me, I was like, man, like you need to do this before every game. And I'm like, yo, that takes so much energy to do. <laughs> and and it's not just because like, you didn't want to perform it good, but it's the fact that like, when you do it, you go into this different zone. And when you zone in on that, you really channel the energy of your ancestors and the ones before you. And so it's been so cool. It's been amazing that, you know, Hard Knocks was able to capture it. You know, it went viral when I was at LSU as well. Mm -hmm. And the best thing about it is I'm just so glad people get to now understand the true meaning and have a different appreciation for the Polynesian culture. Um, That's what I've been so grateful about is, you know, people are starting to understand more than just, you know, Troy Polamalu with the long hair or Junior Seau or, you know, all these polys that came before us. You know, they understand that, hey, wow, the Polynesian people, they come from love. They come from respect. They come from unity, you know? So I'll tell you what, cool. I'll tell you what, it's, it's really intimidating. 
Like if, yeah. I'm, yeah. if I'm on the opposite side of the field, I'm saying to myself, "Oh shit, this is I don't, I'm not, I don't know what I'm getting myself into." Uh -huh. um, what what player, you know, defense or offense, whatever the case may be, who are you looking uh, forward to like playing with? Was there anybody oh. that kind of not swayed your decision, but you know, set you said to yourself like, "Man, I, I really I want to go to Steelers, a great organization, mm -hmm. it fits my scheme, but I really would love to play with this guy." Uh, Cam Hayward, um, and that's just a no-brainer for me. Um, uh, I mean, even if he sees this, he's, I don't want him to take offense, but I, I grew up watching him in high school, um, mm -hmm. you know, when, when even to his days back in college. And it's crazy now that I think it's year 12 for him um, yeah. in the league or, or 13. Um, getting to, like, have the ability to just go out and practice and compete with the guy. Um, and then Larry, I, I've known Larry on social media. We, we've talked and – you know, he texted me the other day. He's like, crazy how life comes full circle in. And I said, yeah, bro, like, I'm, I'm so excited. Alex Highsmith is another player I'm very fond of. TJ Watt, I mean, you don't even got to say, <laughs> it's TJ say Watt. much. <laughs> you know, Montrevious Adams, I was a fan of Montrevious when he was at Auburn. You know, I, I was wow. like, man, who's this guy wearing number one at nose tackle at <laughs> Auburn? You know, so a lot of guys that, you know, I've been fans of, been fond of their game, I'm excited to play with now and, and get able to compete with them and grind with them every day. Um, specifically Cam, you know, when you watch his game, you don't see a flashy player. You see somebody who's hard nosed. You see somebody who's rugged. You see somebody who plays the game the right way. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm a guy that I truly feel football needs to be played a certain way and you got to respect the game. Um, that's why I get so not angry, but whenever I see the, the game of football trying to evolve into this spread, um, RPO and flashy yeah. and, you know, these hybrid things. Um, it doesn't make me bad, but it, it, it's, I feel that you need to have that physicality, hard nose, whether it's offensively or defensively, you need to have that characteristic in your bloodline. Mm -hmm. And I, and when I watch Cam throughout all these years, I watch a guy that he plays football. He plays his blocks, whether he's playing a four technique, whether he's playing a three technique, a two eye or shade, or even a zero tech. He plays the game the right way. I'm excited to get next to him. I'm excited to get next to Lario. I'm excited to get next to Montrevious and be able to take a lot off their plate in the way that they can just go and play football. Yep. Um, I take a lot of pride in doing dirty work. Uh, I'm six foot three, 320 pounds on a good day. <laughs> and I love being able to, and you can ask the guys I've played next to the last three years in LA. I always tell them, man, if you want to go take a freestyle and you want to go, go, I got your back. You know, you want to go take that B gap, I'll cover for you. Like, that's just my style of play. I don't want, you know, I don't want it to be this guy that, you know, flashy and this and this, because that's not how I play. That's not how I was built. You know, that's mm -hmm. not how the man above made me. I'm Polynesian. I'm thick boned. I have a <laughs> thick lower body. I'm not made here to be Aaron Donald. You know, I'm made here to sit, sit my big ass in the middle of a defense and make sure everybody else eats, you know, and I've, I've learned to understand that and grow in that role. So, man, I'm excited. You know, I'm also excited to get to work under Coach Dunbar, you know, being an LSU guy and, yeah. and you know, being able to learn under his mentor, Coach Pete Jenkins, um, who was a, a, my coach at LSU. Um, it's crazy how things come full circle, and it's crazy now that, you know, being 26 years old, I get to come full circle again and evolve my game even more to what I thought things I couldn't tap into. You know, me and KD have talked about like how we can grow that as a football player. Yeah. And I think you mentioned Cam would be one of those guys that's incredible to learn from as well. Yeah. You know, Cam, Cam has yes. some moves. He might not be a flashy guy. You're talking about not being flashy and, and you couldn't be more accurate. I would call it like blue collar football and, and a guy like a Braden Fajoko who comes from undrafted has to gut it out, grind it out, plays for a few years, comes to Pittsburgh. It's a mindset thing. And I think it's a big thing that the Steelers were looking at, at changing this year. And you can see it. They beefed up the offensive line. They beefed up the defense defensive line they're getting guys who are more about smash mouth football and less about flashy and high flying and and all sorts of shit like that and so to hear you talk about your mindset i think is is gets me fucking my heart is pounding talking to listen to you talk about it because that's exactly what the steelers have lacked is a little bit mm -hmm. of just that that smash mouth blue collar we're gonna do whatever it takes to win i don't give a shit what the stat line looks like we're gonna get the job done so to hear you say that man gets me fucking going you know one thing 
one thing I've I've learned to realize in the NFL, um, you know, going into my fourth year is no matter how flashy the regular season football gets, I mean, 5,000 yard passers, you know, thousand yard receivers, multiple thousand yard receivers on team. Yep. I'm a firm believer when January and February rolls around, you have to be able to run the ball and you have to be yep. able to stop the run. Yeah. Um, I think what made Philly so successful this year was their trenches. Mm-hmm. Um, and you saw that firsthand um, with their old line, you know, even though I'm a defensive lineman, I'm a big fan when I see good old line play because good old line play equals good D line play. If you play against good alignment, you're going to be a good D lineman. There's no in between, you know, when you play against good competition every day, you're going to become either good or like in the NFL, you're going to get cut. You know, Mm -hmm. there's, there's no, you don't just stay the person you are Um, watching Jason Kelsey, watching Isaac Siomalu, um, Landon Dickerson, Lane Johnson. It's crazy that I'm a D lineman. I can name that whole offensive line. And yeah. uh, Jordan Malata, um, all physical. You know, the fact that they can run the ball against six, seven man boxes, um, when you practice against that every day as a defensive lineman, that makes you better. Getting to practice against Isaac this year in, in, in OTAs and in training exactly. camp, that's exactly. going to make me better. Mason Cole, I'm a fan of him when he was in Minnesota. You know, mm-hmm. he's, a, he's a really athletic center. Nate Herbig, he's a Hawaii boy. He's physical. I've known Nate since high school. Um, getting to play against these guys every day, you have to be able to be physical. And and like I said earlier, you have to be able to run the ball and stop the run, you know, become postseason football because that's what's going to win you games. I'm a firm believer in that. Yeah, no, I believe it too. And that's why I was a little upset and Kevin was upset as well. Um, Steelers missed out on the, on the uh, playoffs this year. We were just catching a groove. Yeah. I mean, there was like five or six games straight where we rushed for over 140 yards. We were really pounding the rock. We were stopping the run. You know, the Steelers, I feel like they never win if in a flashy way. It's always like a 17-14 or a 20-17 to 17 game, and that's fine by me. I don't care. Win's a win. But they were just starting to catch that groove, and they just came up short. I think, you know, if the Steelers – you know, steal a, a game earlier in the year against the Jets or the Patriots, whatever the case may be, they had a chance to make a run in the playoffs because they just figured out how to run the ball and how to stop the run. And that's why I'm so excited for this season, man. You know, like Kev said, we beefed up that O-line who, you know, we had to beef up. And it's crazy. They didn't miss a single game last year, mm-hmm. but we beefed them up. We got you in town, re-signed Larry O, Cam Hayward's back. So, I mean, things are looking up for the Pittsburgh Steelers, man. Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, so a question for you. You're finally going to get to uh, to put Joe Burrow on his ass. So going back to your, <laughs> back to your LSU days, I'm sure that that he's a glass back there. They don't let you get close to touching him, you know, when you're when you're playing for a, a national title. But that's got to be exciting for you to get a chance to put him on his wallet. Oh, Joe, I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm really looking for Jamar on a smoke screen. Uh, I know. I know. Since he, I know. Since he loves seeing Jamar. Jamar talks a lot of shit. Excuse my language. Um, <laughs> since his early days at, at LSU, Jamar came in as a freshman, and he's New Orleans. So you know, them boys from New Orleans, they're gonna talk shit. And even if even if they lose a rep, they're still gonna talk shit. Uh, but th- those two are my dudes. Uh, not anymore, though, uh, on the field. You know, AFC North rivals now. So uh, I'm excited. You know, I'm 1-0 against Joe in the, in the league. Um, we put a whooping on their ass, you know, when I was in L.A. when we played in uh, in Cincy two years yeah. ago. So uh, I'm excited to keep that tradition going. What's uh, what You have a sack dance in mind. So I was looking at your stats. You don't have a, a sack under your belt currently, right? None, none. couple pressures, no sacks. I'm, I'm thinking about doing the gritty, though. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah. That'd be great. <laughs> a big man gritty. I saw I saw uh, I saw Cam doing the gritty last year after he sacked Deshaun. That that kind of got me fired up. <laughs> TJ Watt has just an all time just that kick is just crazy. I mean he's no, he's got so many sacks. He, high. Bro, he's got so many sacks, he's probably runs out of celebrations by now. So, you know, <laughs> all the celebrations I'd probably do if I had sacks, I'll just start giving them to him. Be like, here, here's my list. <laughs> I won't be able to go through these sack celebrations. So here, take that. <laughs> so Braden, what, uh, what does it mean to you to be, to be a Pittsburgh Steeler? Like for us as fans, like it's, it's the tradition, you know, we love, we love our football in this city. So for you, you know, 
growing up? Were you a Steelers fan when you grew up? Because I saw I saw the the photo of you in the Palomalu jersey. Yeah. You know, it's hysterical yeah. to see that. Like, did you grow up a Steelers fan? Yeah. So, man, I was a I was a huge kid. Okay, so, growing up, originally, I was a huge Minnesota Viking fan. Um, I fell in love with Adrian Peterson. That all changed till I met Troy Palomalu. So, Chris Fumatama Fala um, always did his camps in Hawaii. Um, along with K- Chris Kimoyatsu. The Kimoyatsu is our family of ours, blood-related. No um, kidding. So, yeah, when Chris Fumatama Afala would come back to Hawaii, they'd always do their camps, their, their clinics, they'd give back. So one year he brings back Troy, and I'm a little kid. You know, I'm eighth, seventh, fifth or sixth grade. And the first time I get to meet Troy, I'm talking about the most, like, I met this dude and I, I – I was like, there's no way this guy's plays football. Like, this is not Troy Polamalu. You know, he's soft-spoken. Um, <laughs> like, you talk about the most, like, humble guy. He's like, hey, what's up, man? How you doing? You know? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, and, and I'm getting – I literally got to sit down and play Madden with Troy for, like, 30 minutes. And, you know, I was just, like, just in awe at just the fact that this is Troy Polamalu, you know, USC legend. Pittsburgh Steeler Hall of Famer, first ballot. I'm getting to play, you know, games with him. And, you know, ever since then, I, I became a Troy fan. And that's kind of what made me become a Pittsburgh fan. Um, it's funny because before I knew about Troy, I was really a fan of James Harrison. Um, like, James Harrison was, like, all-time, like, favorite because, like, his story, right? Um, cut, you know, uh, I, I think it was uh, – um, what was that? There was that documentary on him. Yeah, on the football guy was like, life. So, yeah, football life. There was like, so how was the combine? And he was like, oh, this guy doesn't know, huh? Yeah, you know, like, I, 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 I didn't, you get don't know. I didn't get invited. I didn't get invited. And that's how I became, like, very fond of, you know, the old Pittsburgh, you know, 3-4 defense of, you know, Casey Hampton, Farrier, um, you know, all these guys. RC, Ryan Clark, that's a good, good friend of mine. You know, he's an OG. Troy. Um, you know, I remember that hit Ryan Clark late on freaking Wes Welker. Oh, um, yeah. I, st- I still think about that every day. So, man, I grew up watching the Steelers, and it's so funny how things come full circle now, and now I'm getting the opportunity to play for them. Um, it means a lot. You know, going back to your question, Kev, there's a lot of history. Um, there's a lot of big shoes to fill. You know, I know this city. You know, I know that front office. I know the players that play for this organization. Um, they, There's a lot <clears throat> riding. You know, there's a lot of history. Um, and they only demand the best every day, whether it's working out, going to meetings, practice, only demand the best. And I feel like I've thrived in these situations of competition and, and showing up and giving my all to the game of football. Um, I've done it every year and I'm just excited. I'm excited to go in and play football for the Pittsburgh Steelers. A hard nose. When you think about the Steelers, you think about blue collar. Um, when I think about the Pittsburgh Steelers, I think about a hard hat steel mill worker with a lunch pail box. That's what I think about when I think about the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. I don't think about someone showing up in a suit and tie for mm-hmm. work. You know, I think yeah, of somebody yeah. showing up in steel toe Levi jeans with a Carhartt jacket, you know, with a lunch pail box, just pounding away at iron. That's what I think about. And I'm excited, bro. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to compete. I'm excited to learn from the best. Yeah. I think uh, you'll definitely really be thrilled with the, uh, you know, seeing Latrobe and, you know, practicing there, you know, that's a tradition that's been going on for so many years now. And it's like, you know, a really tight knit group. It seems, Mm -hmm. you know, you know, you eat there all day long. You don't leave, you don't leave, you know, you stay there with them, you hang out, you play games, you know, we've seen some videos of, you know, cam playing cards with the people and stuff like that. So, I mean, you gotta be looking forward to that, you know, getting close with the, with the players and your teammates now. So that'll be awesome to see. I'm excited, bro. I'm excited. Now I've, I got to meet some of the guys. Um, you know, Kenny was the first person to text me uh, when the news came out. He texted me last Thursday as soon as, like, the news released on Twitter. Love that. Um, so, you know, he he was the first one. Then Cam was the second. Then, you know, Alex really uh, reached out on Instagram. Larry O, you know, all the guys. Um, you know, then I got to meet a couple of them up there. But, uh, man, it was cool. Bro, I, I've never felt so much love in a short amount of time. You know, like I said, like, I can really tell how much, you know, this city and that organization cares about football. And it's only right, you know, I go out and give them my all. You know, if somebody's going to pour 110% into you, it's only right you give 120 back. 
That's incredible, man. The way you talk about the city is exactly what I want to hear out of out of guys that are going to be new to the franchise because mm-hmm. like you're you're right. It's blue collar. These are people that they work all week to be able to afford that ticket to go watch you play mm-hmm. football on Sundays. So to hear a guy that's going to give everything he can fucking give to churn it out to help this team win, I could not ask for you to say better words. I couldn't have written a better script for you to read back to me that would describe mm-hmm. what it would mean to be a Steeler. Like it's fucking incredible, man. We are so happy to have you in Pittsburgh. Yeah, bro. You don't, you don't have to rehearse this stuff. You know, it comes from the heart. Um, you know, you just know, like I said, I have a good feel for genuine people. Um, you know, when I went there and, you know, I mean, everybody was just so ecstatic. I mean, from, you know, the, the ladies in the front desk to the security guards in the front, bro, like everybody was just, they knew who I was. Um, you know, everybody greeted me, big hugs, big dap ups. Like, like it was exciting, man. Like, you know, everybody was calling me Oos, like in the facility and, you know, and there's another Oos in town and I'm like, man, this is all I can ask. You know, I'm in football heaven, you know, they care about football. They ask about my family and they know about the Polynesian culture. And I think what tops it off, what I'm really excited about is the food. Um, so off topic, when I first, you know, got the news, I was going to Pitt and all that. A lot of old buddies that have played for Pitt reached out to me. So, um, uh, a good buddy of mine, uh, Matt Filer, you know, was with, yep. with, with the Steelers for, for a while. I played in L.A. Yep. First thing he said was, you're going to love the kitchen. <laughs> <He> said, <laughs> you know, and a couple other guys I knew uh, told me, they're like, yeah, you, you got to be careful because it can get real. Like, you know, they make <laughs> really good food in there. And so I went in on Monday. They had like like quarter pound beef burgers for lunch. And then like <laughs> they had like a whole, like five different, like assortments of pizza, a salad bar, fruit bar. And I'm like, yo, this is lunch. And it was like, all you can eat. And I was trying to be like, you know, courteous. Cause I'm not trying to show like I'm fat, you know? So I'm like, yeah, let me get extra lettuce on the burger and you know, all this stuff. And like, they had like a whole lemonade stand. It was like strawberry lemonade, sweet tea, all that kind of stuff. I was like, I'll do water. Water's fine. You know, but I'm like dying inside. I'm like, geez, I want that strawberry lemonade. <laughs> that's so funny, dude. Oh man. That's great. Yeah. No, it's, you know, just a historic franchise, bro. That, you know, they do things the right way. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of there's a lot of franchises out there in the NFL. And one thing I'll say about the Steelers, they're never ever up and down. They really are never like that. They're even keeled the whole way. And you know, for them, they don't rebuild, man. They they just reload. And you know, I, yeah. I look at you as a guy who's gonna, you know, boost up this friggin' defense, man, stop the run, fill up some holes. You know, and I know, like you said earlier, you're not going to have the stats that you see on, on paper, but, you know, you're going to do the dirty work. And, that, you know, that's all, you know, we could ask for as, as fans, and that's all a defense could ask for, you know, secondary guys like, you know, you know Minka and Neil now and KZ. And, you know, Pat Pete, that's another guy that's probably going to be so cool to play with, you know, mm-hmm. a legend. So I'm just looking forward to it, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a firm believer in, in, you know, I don't, I don't want our – our back end 180 pound, 200 pound DBs to worry about fitting a B gap, you know, an inside <laughs> zone. You know, if, 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 if a guy like Minko or, or Keanu is back there having to worry about, you know, inside zone on first and 10, then, you know, we got issues up front. You yeah. Know? yeah. So, um, yeah, I think that's one thing I was able to, um, help out a lot in LA, you know, just was, you know, allowing guys like Derwin and, and, you know, Nazir, all the safeties back there to just, play free um yeah. to get running because one thing about the afc west that's very different from the north is it's not as physical there's a lot of zone running um but it's a lot of like you know wishy-washy jet motions spread yeah. offenses this and this so you know you really can't have your dbs trying to focus on the run game because they're i mean you got the chiefs travis kelsey doing whatever and you know you got Devonte adams and darren waller with the raiders and jerry jude with the broncos so it's very important to play light boxes in the West, whereas the North, like, bro, it's all physical ground game. Oh, and, like, I love that. Like, you're I love snatching. that. Like, like with the exception of Cincinnati evolving a little bit into this pretty boy football, I mean, but Baltimore and Cleveland is, like, Smash straight, out. like, 21, 22, 12, 13 personnel, like, run the rock. And, and that's why I love being here in Pitt because, like, it fits my style. Uh, this is, like – the type of football I grew up playing. We played it in LSU against Alabama, Auburn, and Florida, and Georgia. So, you know, I'm excited to be in this division. 
Do you think that was, and this might be a tough question, do you think that was one of the reasons that the Chargers didn't keep you was because you didn't really fit that scheme anymore? That's a really good question. Um, I, I do feel like one of the reasons is, I think, the salary issues. Yeah. Um, in L.A., uh, you know, my tender was – 2.6 million this year. Um, so, I mean, with like 8 million cap space, and that's not even including what the new draft class capital is. Right. Uh, I, I kind of knew they weren't going to tender it, especially, you know, as a nose tackle. Um, in the AFC West, you, you kind of – defenses like to run a lot of light boxes um, because of teams coming out at 11 and 12, but 12 really plays like 11 personnel, you know, because mm-hmm. you're not going to honor Travis Kelsey as a true tight end when he's in the game. Even right. if he's attached, you know, you're going to play him as like another X receiver, you know, a yep. big receiver, a wide out. Same with Darren Waller. Um, the only true team that I would kind of consider like a smash mouth team was like the Raiders. And that's kind of why they had success late in the year um, was because they started feeding Josh Jacobs more out of 21 personnel. And they, yeah. they had, you know, Jakob Johnson and there's a fullback, you know, the old Patriot way where they run lead, lead, lead in between the tackles. Uh, but yeah, Jerry, going back to your question, you know, that's a really good question. I, I think, as far as a as a scheme fit, I I think personally I fit it, you know. But like I said, the way this this league works, sometimes with money and all that, um, you know, when you have certain contracts and and you know you have to make things work, some you know other guys on the spectrum have to fall off, and you know I was a casualty to that, and you know I was blessed to be able to play three years there, but man, I'm. I'm putting that behind me. I'm, I'm excited to put on a, a Pittsburgh Steelers black helmet, and I'm ready to give my all for this organization. Yeah, dude. I mean, speaking of the, you know, the salary and the cap and whatnot, like one thing, and you can speak on it if you want to, um, the, the Lamar Jackson scenario kind of blows my mind. It, it mm-hmm. does. Like, he, he has proven that he can win. Mm-hmm. Like, you can, he can win some games, dude. And I know mm. he's been banged up a little bit and whatnot, but I mean, you've seen a guy, Deshaun Watson, he didn't play football for over two years, and he comes back, he gets all this guaranteed money. I think it's only right that Lamar gets something like that, if not that and more, for mm. what he's done to this Baltimore Ravens franchise. And now they're in a pickle like, yeah, dude, we're not giving you this money. I would love for Lamar to get out the division. I really would, and I can't mm-hmm. believe – that other teams aren't chomping at the bit to go get this guy. So I don't know if you have any takes on it or opinions. Like if you're another team out there that needs a quarterback, why wouldn't you be pursuing Lamar Jackson? So my biggest thing about the whole situation is I think the issue starts coming into play where they're not worried about paying him the money. Um, They're not worried about giving him the guaranteed quarterback money he deserves. I think the issue starts happening is where when you look at Cleveland's cap and you look up the cap percentage Deshaun Watson takes up. It's crazy. Yeah. And then you realize they're like, okay, we got Miles Garrett. I mean, um, Amari, Amari. Cooper. Yep. So you're like, Chubb. Okay, that's, that's Chubb. You're like, that's three, four guys. That's half, maybe a fourth of the cap. Yeah. Now you're like, okay. You know, for quarterbacks are happy. Like, oh, Deshaun got his money. Cool. Kyler got paid. Cool. That's great for the market. But from an owner's perspective and a front office perspective, how much are you willing to sacrifice on that cap yeah. to where are you going to front load your roster or are you going to be, we have two, three, four stars on this team, but the way a good roster is built is from the back end. You yep. need really good players at not just your starters, but you need good backups in this league to go because yeah, not everybody's yeah. going to play healthy every game. Ultimate you team need, game. You need a lot of good role players. And sometimes a role player may cost more than the other. Sometimes a role player may be cheaper than the other. But if you have four or five guys that take up half the cap, now you're looking at roster casualties and you're looking at, oh, man, like how are we going to build this from the ground up? Because – like I said, Lamar's going to get his money, but it just comes to the fact that he has to go to a team where they have the cap space to make that happen. But you also need to realize, like, geez, we got to build the back end of this roster too. You know, because if you're so front-loaded and you start hitting injuries and you start hitting, you know, that 
week eight, week nine of the season where the roster starts changing, where you don't have mm-hmm. your starting left tack, where you don't have your starting tight end or your middle linebacker and, you know, your second team guy is now starting. How good is your depth to where did you really focus on that in the offseason or did you really try to, okay, we're going all in, let's do it. So that's my whole take on it. I think it just comes down to how much an owner and a front office is willing to be like, do we really want this part of the cap being taken up by two or three players? Yeah, no, I think that that you make a great point and it's the Browns are going to be hurting. And and I talk about it a lot on Twitter is because, yeah, you Mm. can give a guy that kind of money. And I've told Jerry, I'm like, you know, the owners might not want to give all of that guaranteed money either, you know, so Mm. there could always be collusion in the league. I hate I hate saying that kind of shit, but these guys run a business, man. So Mm. it's not to say that they don't just want to be handing out two hundred and fifty million dollar guaranteed contracts to all of these Mm -hmm. players because they know what you're saying. It's going to cripple that team if they have to be locked into that if they mm. if they have to pay all that money out so you're going to see the browns they're going to come back down to earth here because you can't have you can't pay five elite players and have you know 48 other guys that you need to roster on sundays mm. be a bunch mm-hmm. of scrubs you know in the yeah. ultimate team game you better have some other dogs some role players like you're mm-hmm. talking about that can produce so i'm never i'm never a fan of paying the quarterback a ridiculous amount of money unless you're getting Patrick Mahomes type of production, a guy who Mm. can maybe carry a roster that doesn't have as great talent the the way through. But if you're not getting that, which, you know, I love Lamar. I'm just not sure that that's what Lamar would end up being. You know, you can handcuff your franchise five years, you know, and set you back. So Mm -hmm. it's a tough, it's a slippery slope. I I don't even think he's going to, I don't, I think he's going to refuse to play under the tag. I don't think he'll even play. I don't even think he'll play. I really don't. Um, I had a question for you. Is there anybody, you know, and I don't know if you check the Steelers schedule. Do you have any type of rivalries or whatnot with any offensive linemen that you're looking forward to matching up against? I was hoping to play against the Chargers this year, but they're not on the schedule. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, we'll, see them, we'll see them in the playoffs. Um, um, but uh, I know, I know that we play Tennessee this year. I, I mean, I, I want to play against Baltimore. I, I've, from what I heard, everybody. I mean, Sunday night, you know, at Heinz and or at MNT, that Sunday night football game against Baltimore is like the the thing, the thing to play. Yeah, um, Kenny loved it. He was saying he was like, "Dude, that place was rocking. It was great. It was so much yeah. fun." Yeah. So you know, I, I I think that's one game I have circled this year, especially playing them twice. Um, I think everybody in the division. I, I love Cleveland too. Um, I'm a huge fan of Chubb. I mean, the way he runs the ball, he's a hard runner. Um, they have a really top tier offensive line up front. So, you know, those are games that I look for. I, I, I love playing against good old, old good old line. Like I said earlier, you know, I'm a fan of good offensive line play because it brings the best out of you as a defensive line. So, you know, that's why I really love playing against Tennessee and, and San Fran and even Indy last year, you know, because I go out to go yeah. against, you know, top tier old line and Trent Williams, um, Ben Jones, uh, Quentin Nelson, Ryan Kelly, you know, those guys. So, that's what I'm looking forward to, man, especially being in the North. Everybody's going to run the ball, you know, so it's good to get away from that pretty stuff in the AFC West and, and come to the AFC North. You know what was shocking to me and Kevin? Uh, we're cool with some of the players on the Steelers. I'm not going to reveal any names and throw anybody under the bus, but it's crazy when, like, you know, we know instantly, like, okay, we just got this guy, we got that guy, we re-signed this guy, we're bringing in this guy for a visit. Most of these players don't even know, like, oh, yeah, we got that guy. Yeah, we got that D tackle. Yeah, we got that safety, I think. What was his name again? It's like <laughs> some of these people are so, like, checked out. It's just wild to me. So that's, that's the nature of the beast, man. Like, you you know, the one thing about I can say about football is uh, rosters always change every year. You're never yeah. going to have the same 53 guys two years in a row. It's, it's impossible. It won't happen. Um, and so that's that's the nature of the beast you run into in this game, man. Like, you know, a lot of guys, they build relationships, you become close, the next year you're playing somewhere else, you know, yeah. and, you know, and that can happen to big name guys. You see that happen all the time. Guys get traded, blockbuster, guys get released. Yeah. I mean, big name guys like Adam Thielen, you know, got released this year and, you know, a lot of cap casualty guys around the league. So it, it's a nature of the beast. I don't think a lot of people realize. And then, you know, you see it firsthand and you're like, wow, like, you know, like you said, Jerry, guys are so checked out that all of a sudden it's like you go in and you have like three different guys in your room now from last year. <laughs> yeah. You know, and you're like, oh, shit, like, damn, this whole room's different from what it was last year. 
Yeah, it was it was funny. We were spitballing <laughs> with someone, and it, that's how it came out. They're like, "Oh yeah, yeah, we did, we did sign that guy, right?" And I'm like, "Jesus Christ!" Because Jerry and I are so hyper focused on it. Like, yeah. if, if if the Steelers sign a player, I know like within seconds of it, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's all this, this is my whole fucking life, man. Like, I love this. This is it, yeah. right? Right. This and, is it. Yeah. No. So we we appreciate you coming by. I do want to show you something. So you mentioned Casey okay. Hampton. So. Bro, that's lit. That is, that's lit. That Heinz Ward right there, that's got, lit too. Got the Gotham Heinz, the the seven. Oh my but, gosh! No, I fucking I respect. I love guys like you, grinders, and that's that's Thank Casey you. Hampton. You know, so guys like that, I have a, a special place in my heart for because they're not going to get all the love and attention. You know, that your Aaron Donalds will, but there are there are so many guys in the league that are very good at playing D line that just get glossed over. And you know, so that's die hard football fans that understand the game. Mm-hmm. I love a guy like a Braden Vahoko. So we appreciate the shit out of you stopping by today. Honestly, it means the world to Jerry. And I, uh, we'll see again. Jerry and I are going to be at camp, so Jerry might be doing okay. a little water, a little water work, water boy stuff out at camp this year. So okay, <laughs> hydrated. Okay. Don't worry, Braden. Okay, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for coming on, brother. It means a lot to us. No, I'm man, excited. I had a blast. All the Steelers fans should be excited when they listen to this uh, interview. So I'm just really, really grateful that you came on and you know took the time out of your day to chop it us up with us. Oh, good. Jerry, Kev, thank you guys, man. It was a blast. It was a blast. For sure. Absolutely, brother. Appreciate it. We're here. We're still here. We are still here.